Hi, so far we have looked at income statement, the balance sheet, profitability ratios, return ratios, liquidity ratios, working capital efficiency ratios, debt to equity ratios and I'm completely impressed by this company. Everything looks very good. Gross profit margin improving, net profit margin improving, EBITDA margin improving, very low amount of debt, very high amount of interest coverage ratio, right? Almost uh, ideal uh, current ratios and quick ratios, very high amount of uh, payable days, very low receivable days. I think I, I personally feel everything is quite perfect about this company. Now, I can conclude that this might be a good business, but can I conclude that is it's a good investment? No. To know whether if it's really a good investment, we also need to see valuation related ratios, right? Till so far, we were looking at the business related ratios. Now we would look at valuation related ratios. Now one thing is for sure, if you are going to deal anything about valuation, what you need is share price. Right? Now share price of this company, let us say is around 3420. Now what I want to see is, am I getting it at a cheap price? Right? Now for that, we need to look at different metrics related to the company. Now, different valuation related metrics, right? Now, what are some metrics that we are going to look at? Firstly, let's look at price to book value and price to earnings or the PE ratio, right? Now, how do I calculate price to book value? Price to book value is nothing but, let, us, let me just write this, price to book value is nothing but share price divided by book value per share. Now, how do I calculate book value per share or what do you mean by book value per share? Firstly, what do you mean by book value? Book value means your total equity and dividing that by your total shares outstanding, your ending shares outstanding would give you your book value per share. Now, how do I calculate that as nothing but your book value per share should be, let us look at for uh, you now valuation will just look at the current the latest one so let us say the book value is your total net worth so sorry it's down here your total net worth divided by your total shares outstanding okay now here i'm just taking the weight no weighted average and uh, because this company has not issued new shares it is uh, the same itself so what I see is the book value per share of this company is one four, close to 142. What is price to book value? 24 times, right? One second, this should be written as, oh, so sorry. 24.09 times on the expensive side, right? Now that is what you mean here. The business might be good, but the valuation wise, it seems a bit expensive. You're paying 24 times the book value of the company, which means the book value of so on the balance sheet, the accountant has said that this business or this valuation of all the assets minus liabilities that the company has is 141 per share. But in the share market, what you are buying it for is 24 times more, that is close to 3420 per share right so it is definitely an expensive company next let's look at pe ratio now what is pe ratio similarly just like you want you have book value per share you have earnings per share and what you need to do is right so sorry okay and then you need price to earnings ratio or this is nothing but the famous PE ratio what do you mean by earnings per share earnings per share is nothing but PAT that is profit after tax divided by weighted average shares outstanding so what I get is a PE or, or, or an earnings per share of 69.6 times 69.6 uh, 69 per share the profit per share is 69.6 
what is the pe ratio share price divided by the earnings per share which is close to 50 times right now 50 times or 49.14 times this is huge right now this is because people are expecting that the company might grow very fast it might do very well now because of all these things the share price today itself is quite expensive right on the other hand let us say had this share price been around 1000 you could have got a company at a much lower pe right? so anything about about 20 times or 25 times should be considered expensive now i'm not saying that you should just take a, a kind of a one cannot just look at the pe ratio or just conclude by looking at the pe ratio but then whenever an analyst is seeing a company as a very high pe ratio then he needs to be sure about the growth prospects in the business he needs to see whether the business can grow otherwise high pe ratio can be very dangerous right what that means is business might be good right there, there, there's no doubt on that the business might be good but then you are paying a very high price for it so it's like saying you might like a shirt a shirt might be very good the quality might be very good the yarn quality might be very good the, the fitting might be very good but are you ready to pay one lakh rupee for that no and right? so that there's a difference between a shirt being good and uh, a purchase being good or bad similarly there's a difference between a business being good and whether an investment is good or bad now here what you would i would conclude that here is a good business but at a expensive price now what you need is a good business at a cheap price right now what we have discussed is price to book value we have discussed price to earnings now let's look at some more ratios dividend related ratios and now these are also going to be used for valuation right now first is let us look at dividend per share now where do you get this data from where do you get dividends from now dividend is something that you can actually take from the company's annual report itself now for that let me just quickly go to the annual report of this company so when i go through the annual report if you see here here the company has in a way uh, kind of summarized its financial statements now here what they do is they've given their dividend this company let us exclude the taxes because that is something that we are not going to get but the company has paid 20 rupees as dividend now 20 rupees is nothing but 25 percent of their face value right so which means uh, basically what this tells you is uh, as a percentage of face value how much dividend has the company paid so the company has paid a dividend of 20 percent okay no one second this is just give me a second yeah this is the change so sorry 25 percent here is not the dividend rate but 25 percent here is nothing but the change the increase in dividends last year it was 16 rupees this year it was 20 rupees now which means your dividend per share is 20 rupees right now there's a ratio called dividend yield dividend yield is nothing but dividend per share divided by share price dividend yield is used to see what percentage of returns are you earning purely in the form of dividends ignoring capital appreciation how much are you earning now here what we see is we earn close to 0.58 percent in the form of dividend yield which is quite low now this now is it good or is it bad it depends now a growing company ideally should pay less dividends now think of it this way here is a company which is earning 40 45 percent return on equity right we have calculated the return on equity was close to upwards of 40 45 percent now think of it this way company has generated some profits company has two options company can reinvest that money in, in its own business and can earn a decent high amount of return on equity or company can announce dividends wherein the shareholders will get the money and the shareholders will invest it at 10 percent fixed deposits now what do you think is good for the shareholders the good thing for the shareholder is that the company should not pay dividends instead 
the company's dividends should be reinvested into the business itself right the company instead of paying out dividends should invest that money back into the business and grow the business so usually growing businesses businesses which are doing well it's always better that the company pays less dividend instead in, in instead reinvest money cash flows back to its business now that is what you want so dividend yield i won't say that 0.58 is very low but yes i would have preferred a higher dividend yield because that what what that means is i am depending lesser on capital appreciation which is quite uncertain and kind of uh, i am getting a substantial amount of returns purely in the form of dividend which is quite reliable because for stable businesses dividends is something that keep coming right so even if you see britannia last year they paid 16 rupee per share dividend this year a 25% growth rate in future it could pay a higher growth dividend because these are stable businesses right so having a high dividend yield definitely helps you and as an investor you should basically kind of uh one would one would uh, kind of like to have a high dividend ratio a high dividend yield ratio but I, again talking about dividend ratio i think one more dividend ratio that i would like to look at is the dividend payout ratio to see how much of it is being retained right now company is paying a 20 rupee dividend per share now what does do you mean by that let us say payout ratio or the dividend payout ratio is 20 divided by the earnings so around 29% which means if 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 britannia is earning 100 rupees it pays out close to 30 rupees or 30% in the form of dividends and the remaining 70 is reinvested back is reinvested back into the business Now, when I say reinvested back into the business, it could be to repay debt, it could be to pay the pay money to suppliers, it could be to expand. But this is something that is reinvested back into the business instead of giving out dividends, right? Or, or one should see one 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 when one is looking at dividend yield, he should also look at repurchase yield because even repurchase or buying back in a for, is in a way of is a way of returning money to shareholders. But yes, a decent amount of dividend. yield ensures that i have to rely less on the uncertain appreciation and in fact uh, depend more on the reliable which is the dividend especially for a stable dividend stable company in a uh, defensive non cyclical businesses right so this is how you look at some valuation ratio so what are some valuation ratios we have discussed right we looked at what is book value per share and then price to book value per share quite expensive we looked at earnings per share and then looked at price to earnings per share again quite a bit expensive and then we looked at dividend yield on the lower side ideally should have been a higher ideally should have would have preferred a higher dividend yield right so these are how this is how you look at the dividend yield of a company trying to understand how uh, try, uh, this is how you look at the valuation ratios of a company trying to understand how uh in general value for money is for an investor who's investing in this company thank you